What's up guys, welcome back to a new episode here at ASAN. Figured I'd give you an update on what all's going on at the garden. So it's been a while since we've actually done a walkthrough around here and showed you the projects that are happening in the nursery. We're actually in mid to late May right now, so things are starting to really heat up at the nursery. We're having to water more frequently right now. And I actually am going to be putting up the shade cloth across the nursery today. So I'm gonna show you what our structure here looks like, why I do what I do, and why I put certain trees in certain locations in the garden. So let's go down and actually set some of that shade cloth up first, and then I'm gonna walk you around and show you some of the projects that we have going on here in the nursery. So the reason that I have this umbrella up above this trident maple here is because a couple of days ago in one of our intensive classes we did partial outer canopy defoliation on this guy, taking off the entire outer canopy of the tree. Now up until that point, the internal portion of the tree had been shaded out by the external canopy. So if I were to leave this tree out in full sun after having done that, that internal growth would fry in about 10 minutes. So every day from about 11 in the morning until say four in the afternoon, we're gonna be putting up this umbrella probably for the next three or four weeks here until we can really sort of fully reintroduce the tree into full sun. But this is just such a massive tree that there's no way for me to move this under the shade cloth. So this is something that we have to do every year with this guy. So you'll notice here in the middle garden at the nursery, I also have a shade structure, but I'm not actually gonna pull out the shade cloth quite yet up here. A lot of trees under this area are conifers, so they can take quite a bit more sunlight and a decent amount of heat. But once we actually get into, say like the second week of June or so here, when temperatures really start heating up, getting closer to like 95, 98 degrees Fahrenheit, which is you know pushing 40 degrees Celsius, it's still better to put some of these guys under shade, particularly the little shoheen trees. It's gonna be impossible for me to keep up with the watering if they're out in full sun all summer long. So the shade cloth up here is 30% cut, and that usually does enough to give these guys enough light while still protecting them a little bit during the hottest part of the summer. Behind me here on these benches are some of our other Trident maple projects that have recently been partially defoliated. So I am going to be pulling out the shade cloth in this area here to protect these guys just like the trident that's in the upper garden there. So these guys have actually been sitting out in partial sun here. It's been you know somewhat cloudy but starting to pick up obviously with the sun for the last couple of days. So I'm getting a little nervous about having them out in direct sunlight because again that internal growth can fry very very quickly. So this here is 30% shade cloth and actually with the trident maples I like to have them under a little bit more sun even after we've done this defoliation on them. So rather than the 40% cut like what we've done down below, this is gonna be 30% up here. Basically, it's gonna help produce a little bit finer leaves, smaller leaves on these trees if I can keep them in slightly more sun. But again, full sun, not a good idea for these guys. So I wanna show you this trident maple in particular right here. This tree is one that we've actually been developing here since I started the nursery back in 2018. So it's been here for almost five years at this point. We basically got it out of quarantine from Brussels Multi Nursery and then essentially cut most of the branches off and rebuilt most of them since then. So it's a tree that I really have built here entirely at the nursery, aside from the trunk, obviously, which was grown in the ground in Japan. But the tree in five years has developed enough to a point where it's ready for exhibition. So this tree is actually gonna be going on display at an art gallery exhibition called The Blue Spiral. It's gonna be in Asheville, North Carolina from the beginning of June uh, for the first two weekends of June of this year, 2023. So I'll put a link in the description down below to the information about the event, but you guys should come out if you can. I'm gonna be there so we can chit chat and hang out. It's gonna be a lot of other professional bonsai artists there as well with their trees on display. And the trees are gonna go on display with local artists work from the Asheville area. So definitely check out the link in the description for all that information. So down in the lower garden here at the nursery, this is our main shade structure behind me here. I built this back in 2019 when we were coming up on really our first summer here at the nursery because it just bakes here in the summer. Temperatures are crazy hot here. You can see that the ground is all gravel here so it radiates a ton of heat as well. So I built this shade structure and put up 
30% shade cloth in some areas and 40% in other areas. So down here at the very bottom, this is where we keep a lot of our deciduous material that is much more susceptible to summer damage from the sun. So the shade cloth down here is a 40% cut. And as we move a little bit further up into that section there, there are more and more conifers in that area. And the shade structure up there is a 30% cut. So today I'm only gonna be pulling out one of the shade structures down here in the 40% area, because again, the deciduous trees are a bit more susceptible to damage at this time of year. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this section right now. So another tree that's going to go into this art exhibition in North Carolina is this Rocky Mountain Juniper right here. So this tree has actually only been out of the mountains for about 20 months at this point. I styled it for an episode of Bonsai U back in April and it's actually flushed out beautifully and in one of our recent intensive classes here, a student of mine, Dave, from up north, actually cleaned this guy up and helped me prep it for the show. So I am very pumped to be able to take this tree and put it on exhibition less than two years after it was collected. Another project I want to show you here in the nursery is this Arakawa Japanese maple. Now we are obviously in late May right now and the tree has no leaves on it, but that's because I just defoliated it today, as a matter of fact, for a bonsai yu episode that's coming out soon. So this tree actually ended up with a little bit of a disease issue this spring across all of the foliage. So it was necessary to do 100% defoliation on this guy after treating it with some systemic fungicide. So I expect that the next flush of growth will be nice and clean and beautiful and significantly smaller than the first flush. But it's always a little risky to do this type of work on an older Japanese maple like this. So, you know, there is a potential for a little bit of dieback here and there, but in some instances, I think it's absolutely necessary. And that was the case with this guy. Now this juniper right beside me here is another project that I'm super pumped to show you guys coming up here soon. This is a tree that was imported from Japan and it's kind of hard to tell what species of juniper it is or what variety of juniper it is. It looks to me to be maybe a shikoku shimpaku which is actually a relatively rare thing to find. The dead wood is a little bit chunky but there's a lot of movement and motion to the tree and the foliage doesn't appear to be grafted. It looks a little bit like kishu but slightly coarser which is kind of an indicator to me that it's a shikoku shimpaku. So uh, no telling exactly but very pumped to work on this guy. I've got a friend of mine who's going to come over and actually help do the carving on the dead wood of this. Very professional guy. It's going to be featured in an upcoming episode of Bonsai You on the platform. So if you're interested in checking out some really cool carving techniques, sign up for the platform in the link in the description down below. But I will be posting photos of this uh, final product once I get it styled up and get the branches placed on our Instagram. So check that out too. So we're also in full preparation mode right now at the nursery for the upcoming U.S. National Show, which is still a few months out in September of this year. A lot of my students and customers have trees that are ready for the show but need that final summer of preparation. So we've got at least probably a dozen trees that we're taking up this year for the show if they get in. Fingers crossed, we're still waiting on a response from the coordinator of the show as to whether or not the trees have gotten in. But if they do get in, we'll have at least a dozen, if not maybe 20 displays that we're taking up. And one of those is this 1C juniper right behind me here. So this tree was actually a bald and burlap tree initially, uh, just five years ago when we first opened the nursery. It was then put in a crappy ceramic pot for a little while, and then I moved it over to this better ceramic container after that. One of my students actually purchased it while it was still raw material in the first year at the nursery here, and we've been developing it ever since. He's actually maintained this tree in Gainesville, Florida for the last few years, and it's grown like a weed down there. So we're gonna get this guy all prepped and ready, and I'm gonna show you what the final product of this looks like at the end of this video. So here is the 
1C Juniper after a few hours of detail wiring. I actually had to do this spanning a couple of days here because we got so much other stuff going on at the nursery right now. But I think it turned out pretty nice. We've got a lot of nice kind of really small fine layers across the tree. And of course these will fill in between now and the national show in September this year. So fingers crossed, we're gonna take a picture of the tree today and submit it for the show. Hopefully it'll get in and hopefully you guys can see this tree at the show later this year. So that's going to do us for this episode here at ASAN. Hope you guys enjoyed our little walkthrough and explanation of what we do in late spring slash early summer. And then maybe you can apply some of these things to your personal collection at home. Once again, if you're interested in checking out our online bonsai learning platform, the link is in the description down below. So I hope you guys check that out and we will see you guys next time around.